Welcome to Elaine and Lightning's video blog number 24. Today we're going to continue through the Course in Miracles, Lesson 15. I call it Tapping Through the Course, and you can find out what I mean by that if you, if you uh, are following the lessons, and if you do this lesson with me today, you can see what I mean by that. As an EFT coach, come to see the value of practicing tapping, which is the nickname for Emotional Freedom Technique. Um, <clears throat> And as I, even as I uh, read or as I am doing this lesson, it is um, very, very helpful as we are releasing ego consciousness, okay? These lessons are so powerful, and I have a big day today, but I got up early so I could do a lesson before I leave. I'm going to go get some massages and have an EFM, excuse me, e EMF treatment, I would say it backwards <laughs> after saying EFT, EMF, which is an energy um, treatment and it deals with the aura of the body and then the massages are going to be uh, dealing with the fascia. These are very supportive to what I do. I have to travel a little bit to do that and then I've got some other things to do today. So I wanted to get this in this morning because I'm really seeing the value as I go through these lessons again and I share them. I also am finding that as I practice them throughout the day, it's very powerful the, the changes and the shifts that are coming in my life, the miracles, um, the new vision. Today's lesson will help us to have um, a, another step in having vision as opposed to seeing through the physical eyes, um, which only blocks miracles. My thoughts are images I have made is the lesson for today, lesson 15 in A Course in Miracles. And you don't have to understand what this means. Um, I don't have time to explain all about it. It is uh, explained in the Course in Miracles. But you have to put these things into practice for you to find out how they really work. And um, you don't have to understand EFT. Frankly, it's sort of like flying an airplane. I don't really understand how a plane does it. I just know it works. I've fl flown many times. I love flying. It's a miracle to me every time. Uh, a baby being born is a miracle to me. A uh, baby being conceived and, and growing and born, it's all a miracle. I've had four babies and I'm still amazed uh, whenever I witness or um, when I've experienced my own births. So I'm telling you, it's just like that. It's just miraculous. It's amazing. It really is amazing how it will help. Now, as we've been practicing, I've just been applying the things that I see in my room, and you will too, and that's really the point of it. So, um, it's because you, the thoughts that you think you think appear as images, that you do not recognize them as nothing. So, um, you think you think them, and so you think you see them. And this is how seeing was made. Um, this is the function you've given your body's eyes. It's not seeing, okay? It, this, it takes the place of seeing, replacing, replacing vision with illusions. So this introductory idea to this process of image making that you call seeing will not have much meaning for you. So, so you don't have to really worry about whether it makes sense, because that's really the point, is we want to let go of our own thoughts about it anyway. You'll begin to understand it when you have seen little edges of light around this, the same familiar objects which you see now. That is the beginning of real vision. You can be certain that real vision will come quickly when this has occurred. As you go along, you may have many light episodes. They may take many different forms, some of them quite unexpected. Do not be afraid of them. There are signs that you are opening your eyes at last. They will not persist because they merely symbolize true perception and they are not related to knowledge. These exercises will not reveal knowledge to you, but they will prepare the way to it. So in practicing the idea for today, repeat it first to yourself, then apply it to whatever you see around you using its name and letting your eyes rest on it as you say. We're not going to rush through this exercise. So within the minute that we're going to do this, we're not going to be saying very many physical objects that we see. Okay? And because the idea is to allow this to really integrate. This is why the practice periods are separated throughout the day, three or four practice periods, depending on how much resistance you feel or how uncomfortable it is. 
and you can do a few more exercises if you find yourself open to the idea. If you feel there's a lot of resistance, then do less practicing. And I'm really, really enjoying practicing through these throughout the day again. Originally, I was in a different spot in Course in Miracles, and so um, at the end, as I was bringing these beginning lessons to my video blog, and yet I am really coming back to these lessons, and it's very powerful. So, um, yeah, the idea isn't how many you get into this lesson, it's about just doing it and being um, methodical as we do it, okay? So take a deep breath. This will help get yourself grounded. And then start on Karate Chop. And we're going to say three times. We're going to repeat this lesson. My thoughts are images that I have made. My thoughts are images I have made. My thoughts are images I have made. And you repeat after me, and then you repeat the phrase is only adding what you see in your room, okay? You can say um, this or that, depending on whether it's close or far away. It doesn't have to be actually in your vision, okay? This recycle bin is an image that I have made. That basket is an image that I have made. That headrest is an image that I have made. That trash can is an image that I have made. That broken umbrella is an image that I have made. That puppy carrier is an image that I've made. That table is an image that I've made. Just say the, these phrases, repeat them after me. I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Take a deep breath. See how that feels. I throw in a little ho'oponopono whenever I feel guided to. It just helps us to delete data. We don't have to really know what data we're deleting. We just want to trust. And you just tune into yourself. You're not saying it to someone else. You're actually addressing, um, you could call it your inner child or, or whatever your inner guidance guides you to understand, okay? There again, I'm not here to explain all about that, but just to allow you to experience it. That is the best way to learn how it works. And today I wanted to bring to the table this whole idea that whenever we are looking at what's wrong in our life, we're blocking miracles. And this would be boiled down to ingratitude. So gratitude will help us to really see the miracles that are coming. And a lot of time we'll have one and we'll just miss it because we're so focused on what else we think is wrong with others or ourselves. It doesn't matter. And so that I wanted to bring to the table. I would like to do just a really quick um, tapping round on that and we'll tie it into the lesson today. It may not make sense to you how it does tie in, but it does and that's okay if it doesn't make sense. Trust your inner wisdom which really understands all of this, okay? This lesson makes a lot of sense to the truth in you, that part of you that God created like Him and we've just put all these writing on the wall, we've filled in the gaps with all these ideas and concepts of ourselves and so we project that out and that's what's blocking the light. So we talked about these images that we're looking at um, with our physical eyes starting to have light around them and that that will tell you that you're starting to shift perception to vision. 
And that's the same with our thoughts uh, about everything. Um, so, take another deep breath. Go back to karate chop. Even though I often see what's wrong instead of what's right, it blocks the miracle. I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. Even though I often think that there's more things wrong than right in my world and with myself, I deeply and completely love and accept myself anyway. Even though I'm struggling to be grateful at times, it seems like the world is all wrong and I just want to judge it. I choose to see the miracles instead. I choose to be more powerful. Let's go to the top of the head. A part of me knows that when I focus on what's wrong, I'm blocking the miracle. But I don't think they understand me. They're misjudging me. They treat me like a criminal. Don't they understand that I'm sick? You can substitute your own details in here or you can say what is working for me right now, but it, either way, just tune in. Just tune into your own inner guidance while you repeat. <coughs> I didn't do anything wrong. They just don't care. I was just sick. Maybe more sick and emotionally sick. But I want to focus on the physical sickness. I want to focus on what's wrong with me and what's wrong with the world. No one listens to me. They certainly don't understand me. I don't understand why I have to make up all this time. I don't think I've done anything wrong. A part of me knows that I am not owning my own life. I choose to start taking back my power by being grateful. I choose to be grateful anyway. I ask God and the angels to help me to be more powerful and to choose gratitude this day. Amen. That's enough for today. See you next time. Elaine Enlightening at taplightunlimited.com. Bye-bye.